Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm John P. On today's episode of Geek Beat, rocket launching quadcopters. SodaStream banned from the Super Bowl. Facebook invests in paper. Drink more coffee, it'll improve your memory. And Google is buying everyone. It all begins now. to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. Can you believe they let us put this show on television? No, I cannot. I can't believe it. But I thank you guys for joining us each and every week. Yeah, we don't know You're why insane. you do, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> By the way, you look radiant today. Wow, you, radiant. Yeah, are you, is that a new special kind of shampoo you're using in your hair? It I mean, be. it's very vibrant. It looks good. Yeah. So uh, we've got a lot going well, on this week. <laughs> That's John P. acting like John P. Um, <laughs> we have a ton going on we lately. Do. So after CES, the new year and uh, all the craziness that comes with CES, uh, we came back to a studio full of well, boxes. Well, we didn't just come back to the studio. First we went after CES, we then went to the North American Auto Show yes, in we Detroit. Did. We did. Then we came back and there were and there were boxes. And the boxes began. The boxes began. We've had a steady stream of boxes and today for our live unboxing segment at the end of the show, we've got a ton of stuff, actually so much stuff that we can't even do it all today. We can't. Plus, uh, later on after the show, for those of you who are watching live. Yes. Um, and uh, for those of you who are watching it on TV, remember every Friday at 3 p.m. Texas time, whatever time that is where you are. 4 p.m. Eastern. 3 p.m. Texas time. <laughs> uh, we do go live and you can go to geekby.tv forward slash live and you can watch us live stream this thing or you can chat with us. But the point is, for those of you who are watching it live, after we wrap up yep. the show, we are going to go over there off the set and we'll show you a bunch of other boxes we have that we really can't effectively unbox yeah but you'll all see those things later but some of you who are watching live will see them indeed in their boxes in a little bit and if you are watching live be sure to check in um not get glue anymore get glue is now called tv tag so go to geekbeat.tv slash tv tag and check in and tell the world that you're watching did we actually change the pretty link we did geekbeat.tv forward slash tv tag um, amazingly the team is on top of it wow they are so good <laughs> <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> we, um, we actually have a lot of uh, more things coming up. Actually, last week. Super secret stuff coming, people. Okay, you go You go for that. Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to go last week and then they'll go to the future, but... Oh, go ahead. What happened last week? Well, last week, remember, I unboxed the maple bacon coffee. This place... Yeah. I got to tell you, I'm getting sick of the smell of maple bacon in this office. You're so it came, it came uh, for, as a birthday present. It was awesome. I was skeptical. I actually put it off for a few days because I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to taste. But we brewed it. Scott, Dave, and I have been having maple bacon coffee every day this week, and it is delicious. Go check my Google Plus post for a link to that. Speaking of delicious, some of you may have noticed we have our Verve. Yes. We have our Verve with us. You can get some if you go to vervegeek.com. But uh, Callie stole mine today, so I said, hey, if you're going to steal mine, I'm going to steal yours. She's well, got bold. Usually I she do went the bold. tea, but I went for the uh, slightly carbonated energy drink today because I needed a little energy. This stuff is awesome. So I was checking it out. Okay. Yes. And when you read all the ingredients, I mean, they both have all these vitamins. Vitamin A, right. C, D, E, thiamine, riboflavin, blah, blah. I could go on and on. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. The T one has exactly half the amount of vitamins in it as the bold one. But it has one third the caffeine as the bold one. Right. So usually, you guys know I get all amped up, like on Mountain Dew or bold or bold or whatever. No, it's my turn to get amped up. We'll see what happens to her today, because <laughs> I'm I've gone kind of lightweight here. Nice. So I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen. Well, you're going to tell them that uh, there's all sorts of super secret stuff coming up. Yeah, I'm going to tell you all about the super secret stuff while we're at commercial break. <laughs> Um, no, but I will say one other thing, though, because 
Thank you to those of you who are supporting us as patrons. We really appreciate that. If you go to geekbeat.tv forward slash patron, you can contribute. Like even a dollar a month helps us keep producing the show, which is great. And one of the things that we have is uh, for people who pledge at the $5 a month level and higher, everyone's getting their own official geek badge. Yes. And Dave's been working on the uh, designs and he had one that was really cool. But the problem is when he went to print it, it turns out our badge printer, which is like printing on hard cards, like uh, credit yeah. cards, okay? It can't do as detailed of a design as he created. <laughs> so it's got to be simplified down a little. So anyway, for those of you who are patrons and are going to be getting one of our geek badges, uh, look on the Patreon website today, geekbeat.tv forward slash patrons. I posted something to get your input and ideas on the... Yep. On the uh, badges on the cards that yes. we'll have so thanks to all of you for uh, contributing and, and helping to support the show okay we're going to be right back after this commercial break during which i'm going to tell all of our intimate secrets Woohoo! hey guys welcome back to geek Beat live i'm john p that's callie lewis we're getting on with the stories we got to move quick quick today quick your turn so, <laughs> for the news of the week, I think that we're going to talk a little bit about Google, actually. We've got tons and tons of Google news. It's like the news of the week is all Google. Look, if you, tuned, if you tuned in for anything other than Google, just change the channel right now, people, because it's all freaking <laughs> Google today. It's just ridiculous. But what can uh, I do? We're going to change our name to the Google show. What can I do? <laughs> So uh, you might remember, if you've been paying attention, that Google bought the Motorola hardware, the handset division, um, last year or the year before. They paid $12 billion. That's a lot of money. But now they're selling that, the hardware itself portion, to Lenovo, of all people. Um, but For about $3 billion. Yeah. But here's what's interesting. So they got, they did that original deal. They got a ton of patents, and they're keeping the patents and just Patent. selling the, uh, the the hardware stuff to yeah, Lenovo. Yeah, don't say anything else about the patents because we got that's a whole different story. Oh, that's a whole did different. Did I mix story. them up? Nope, you didn't. Okay, that was a teaser for another story coming up soon. But remember, <laughs> so what also happened was Google sold. Who else did they sell? They sold. Um, Arius. Yes. Google, they, there was a home division which makes set top boxes and cable modems, and they sold it to Arius for $2.35 billion. Right. So that means they've, they've basically sold off about $5, five billion of their $12 billion purchase, leaving the rest of it all for the patents. Like $7 be, yeah. billion dollars worth of patents. I know. It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. Why? Why would anybody possibly want? To uh, just hang on to those patents. Hmm, I wonder. I mean, that stuff is, not, is a we'll find money out maker. Really? Next, Why don't we just talk about that? Because we got to go in the right order. We got to <laughs> go in the story number two All of right. the day. Google also buys an artificial intelligence company called Deep Mind. Deep Mind. So you guys remember? Yeah, they're becoming freaking Skynet. It is they, it's Skynet. They, they are. Y'all remember that uh, they bought my favorite robotics company um, that produce uh, what was their what was Boston their name? Dynamics. Boston Dynamics. Yeah, with the galloping. My favorite that I can't remember the yeah. name of. The galloping um, human squishing they, robots. They have Alpha and Big Dog. Which one? And you the know human. the crazy the ones. Human one. Yeah, the yeah. one that can run like thirty miles. An an hour and, uh, and let's so not now, forget they also have self-driving cars yes so they're they're doing a lot in the artificial intelligence and the robotic space but here's the deep mind buy is not necessarily all about robotics and artificial intelligence there's a possibility it's about that this, murderous robotics and artificial <laughs> right. intelligence now there's a possibility that this this uh, purchase actually plays a part in everything that Google is doing I mean just take for instance the artificial m intelligence stuff that DeepMind is doing could play a role in search make search better um, because they're using uh, computer algorithms and but learning. this is all speculation we have no it idea is. what they're going they're to really do with it and we don't even know what they paid but they the rumor is they paid about 400 million dollars for it Woo. that's a lot of that's cheese. A lot of. A lot of cheese. all right so now speaking more on patents. speaking of Google's seven billion dollar patents so uh, Google and Samsung 
actually got together. They teamed up. What are you going to do? Google and Samsung, they get together and they said, you know what? You got some patents. We got some patents. Let's agree to share our patents for the next decade. Use what you want. And by the way, Apple sucks because they they're not share. in on this. <laughs> this what are you going to do? That, that's actually, it, you know, it's, it's fair, it's smart. We always talk about collaboration in industries. You know, that is a potentially a very good thing for companies to do in an industry. Is collaborate, team up, and yep. work together as opposed to always being separate and in competition. Well, and one of the big problems nowadays are patent trolls. Everybody's, yeah. you know, just rushes out to, to just patent anything, even though they're even if they're not going to make anything with it. I got to get that patent. Right. And then they use it as a protection mechanism to against companies who want to use that technology and actually build something, okay? Mm -hmm. We call them patent trolls. And uh, cuz it's like, you know, you have to pay for access, you know, to their bridge, okay? So, um, in fact, Gary Shapiro, the CEO of the CEA, is often railing about the patent troll problem. Yeah. And it is one that we all need to deal with. So it's funny that Google said, hey, you know what? Uh, we can drop $7 billion and then call Apple a patent troll and team up with our buddies and <laughs> just make them look bad. And so good that's for them. what they're doing. So, yeah. uh, so now, uh, speaking of other news. Right. So, yeah, finally, we're going to get away from Google um, and talk about the NSA, which is John's like favorite subject of all time. <laughs> so, ever since uh, all that stuff with, um, with what's his name? Uh, Snowden. Snowden. Edward Snowden. I can't remember people's names today. What's up with me? You need more uh, verb. Because, I need more verb. Oh, there's a story coming later that mm. will explain why she needs more verb. Indeed. But not yet. Um, ever since that, people have been paying attention and, and kind of frustrated by all the NSA just, you know, uh, issues. And the NSA keeps asking for companies to provide details about their customer base, right? And the companies are like, well, uh, okay, if you're going to ask for that, I'm going to tell my customers. Yeah, and they're like, they, ah, ah, ah. You can't do that. No, mister. But finally. National security. <laughs> finally, companies now can tell their customer base what's going on, how many requests they're getting for from the NSA, but only, like, they can only say, okay, well, we've received between one and 249 well, yeah, well, they have requests. to they have to round off to the nearest 250 number of requests. So <laughs> if they got 10,147, they would have to say, we got about 10,250 right. requests from the NSA for your details. Now, where in the first amendment? What good does this do? I don't know. I don't know. But, you I'm know, I'm not the, sure what good it does. Well, I'll tell you what good it does. The fact is now we'll at least have a ballpark idea of how many of these requests are coming in. So if Google comes forward and they're like, this week we had 50,000 requests from the NSA for your personal data, we can all be like, what the f There are not 50,000 terrorists, okay? Right. So, you know, then we can That's take true. action. Yeah. But right now we don't know, is it two requests or 200,000 requests? We have no idea. So at least, at least we'll get some yeah. idea in the ballpark. All right, well, we are going to take a commercial break, ponder on that, and uh, look up how many requests we've gotten. A don't, lot. Don't worry, we didn't. A lot. <laughs> Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. That break was a little longer than I had expected it to be. Nobody knows that because we just came back from commercial. I'm break. telling them that. Oh, okay. It it, to you, it was seamless. To you, it was like seconds, and to us, it was like centuries. <laughs> Such is the joy of watching a on TV. That's right. So you, you don't have you to get deal to with skip that, right? all that stuff. <laughs> all right. So it is gadget time. It is. What kind of gadgets do we have? Facebook. That's not a gadget. Well, it kind of is now. Do you consider apps a gadget? They're no, gadgety. They're gadgety. They're ga they run on a gadget. All right. So Facebook has now gone into their first product, the app called Paper. So um, basically, it's a newsreader app, like every other newsreader app out there. Um, kind of like bathroom, Flipbook. Right. Uh, it does not become toilet paper in the bathroom, no, Dave. Get it? Um, toilet paper. Yeah. Boom. I, I got it. That was pretty I funny, was Dave. It. No. Anywho, go ahead. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so it's like any other it's like any other news reader app except that they're spying on you, right? Of course, they're and all violating private, all your privacy, privacy issues. issues associated with it. Is absolutely, it from, from and from you can feed? share your information voluntarily with, or involuntarily <laughs> with your friends. I mean, I'm sure are we, involuntarily is the involuntary part? Are we calling that <laughs> sharing? I'm not sure. Um, we kid. We're joking. We love Facebook. We jest. <laughs> Don't share all my private information. Uh, so, yes, anyway, if you are interested in a Facebook user and would like to test it out, go check it out. It is called Paper. It'll be available on February 3rd. So I'll check it out. A couple I don't mind. I'll check it out. And it's the iOS only, by the way, just oh. so you know. Well, I do have an iOS device right here, so I'll check it on that one. But what is Android and iOS is... Smart hotel keys? Yes. This is pretty cool. Is Starwood, pretty cool. they're the guys that own, like, uh... Um, Weston yeah. and W. Yeah, those. Dave has forgotten to even change the monitor. <laughs> Did you do, oh, hi, hi. Apparently, you only want to see Callie. I was Callie. just trying to I smile really, at the camera and really listen like to you. <laughs> I really like her. Anywho, they got Weston, Sheraton, Aloft, and all that. Yeah. What they're doing is they're going to test out a, an appy thing that lets you use <laughs> your smartphone to unlock the doors to the uh, the room. So uh, they have been working That's on this for like the last year, year they and really? a half. I've heard rumors of this coming. I, it may be that there's another company out there doing this, but this is kind of the big, uh, the first big company. I mean, Starwood's a very big company. Well, the question is, how does it work? Like, do I so, register my NFC with Starwood, and then whenever I check in, they have that, and they know. Well, they have and, it. It's or a Bluetooth. When you go in, do you have to use it, or what? Uh, basically, my my assumption and my understanding. Is it's using Bluetooth Low Energy, right? So you, your app would have all your account information in it, right? So mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't probably be able to use this unless you're a Starwood preferred customer, and by that you just sign up for their rewards program. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the front desk, when you check in, they would assign your room number and all of that to your account, and then you would go in, hold your phone up to the lock, and just turn it, mm. physically turn it, and then it lets you in. Actually, it sounds interesting, but this may be one of those cases where we're applying technology where it doesn't just for the sake of applying technology. <laughs> it actually makes our life worse rather than better because it's so much easier. I can I get those little cards. I take out my wallet. I stick it in there. Yes. Bingo. But how many times do you leave your key in the room or lose it while out and about? That's why I have two keys. When you check in, you say, I'd like, oh, 12 keys, please. And, and they're like, what? 12 keys? I forget them a lot. Okay. And how many times do the cards stop working? This happens Again. all the only, time. Only if you, you, no, it happens right. to me all the and time. Again. It doesn't happen to people who get multiple keys when they check in. Because it may happen on one, but not on 12. I, for one... Am I right or am I right? <laughs> am I right? Am I right? I, for one, would love this because I do have a lot of problems with keys. And remember, I, I don't always carry a purse with me yep. and all of this stuff, so it's hard for me you to never carry a with purse with you. <laughs> make okay. other people carry my keys for me and then I forget to get them and then I have to, yeah. you know, it's all then a little big You mess. make other people, like, keep your <laughs> keys in their car and then drive off and then come back and give you your keys. Exactly. Whatever. I, I, I don't know anything about that. But. but I always have my phone with me, so... All right, speaking of other things you always have with you, you always have a jacket with you. I do, because I'm always cold. How would you like it if your jacket had LEDs all over it? Sounds pretty fancy. Because Miria Grunnick has invented a jacket just like that. Nice. It's got LEDs all over it. And uh, her, her philosophy was she likes to go jogging at night. She doesn't so much like getting hit by cars. Huh, who knew? I don't know why. So she put LEDs on her jacket. And then, because that was not quite geeky enough, she also decided, what the heck, I'm going to connect it up to my heart rate monitor. Oh. So now, while she's jogging, we have a video of this. Her LEDs pulse. Nice. To oh yeah, show us. Don't we have a show us a video, Dave? I'm just waiting. <laughs> Do it. Hi, I'm Miria Grunick, and this is my pulse jacket. Um, the motivation behind this was that I would run at night and almost get hit by bicyclists, so I decided it would be a good idea to run with lights. But who really wants to run with plain old boring lights? So I built this very awesome running jacket. 
Now, I know the lights are kind of fascinating, but one of the things that makes them even more interesting is that they're responsive to my heart rate. Currently, I'm wearing a Garmin heart rate sensor, um, and I built an Arduino project that uses an ant transceiver to read the heart rate information from the Garmin, and then it changes the pulse of the lights, the, the pulse rate, in proportion to my heart rate. So this was one of my first running projects. It's very useful, and very fun. Um, I built seven different light modes into it. So here we have one that's a rainbow drop. Uh, this one I call circulatory system so, mode. It's, anyway, this you is get pretty the awesome. Yeah, isn't that cool? I, I don't know. I want to see I... her turn around so we can see the back of it. When she's... Look, it's like a Cylon. I know, right? When she's running, though, I think I would get so distracted by the LED lights. <laughs> I'd be if like, she turns ah. you off, does she die? Yeah. I, I want to know where the battery's coming from. Does she have it, like, plugged in and her heart's supplying the electricity as well? Right. I don't know. Right. It's possible. You never know. <laughs> How about something uh, very useful for people walking over minefields? Well, that? people aren't really supposed to walk over minefields, but I'll bite you know, like what? <laughs> like a shoe that is built to detect mines and uh, make sure that you don't step on them. And this was <laughs> Wait, so it detects them before you because all yeah. shoes detect mines. Right. That's all true. shoes detect mines. <laughs> you mean point, John. before you step on it? Before you step oh, okay. on it. Okay. Uh, this is actually apparently a problem in Colombia where rebel groups uh, and have drug cartels have plant this stuff just to mess with their their clients. Anyway, they've had like 2000 10,000 casualties and 2000 deaths since 1990 so they created these shoes that have a two meter detection range and a signal and so basically when you get close to the mines it'll be like ah! when you get close to the mine does it tase you <laughs> i hope not <laughs> that's one what if you were jogging i mean you're jogging and it's beep beep and you're, by the time you by the time it beeps bang you're dead but right. if it tased you the second it detected anything you yeah. fall flat you don't hit the mine it's safe Tasers your save life. lives. You, you're, wow. you're running, you're jogging, and you're Tasers save chance, lives. But no. <laughs> Speaking well, of... Saving tase, lives. Don't tase me, bro, but come back after this commercial break. And before you go, we want to know, are you going to use Facebook's new paper product or any other Facebook product? <laughs> Let us know. Just head on over to geekbeat.tv slash famespot and leave a 15-second video, and you can play right here alongside us. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie. I'm John. And we've got more good stuff for you. You know, coming up in a bit, we've got a lot of unboxings. I know you guys like that, so stick around for those. We've got so much stuff over there. We've got a lot of boxes. We're going to move fast so that we can get to that for you. We'll but do first, it. If you haven't heard, I, I'm betting because six and a half, six point eight million other people have heard about it. I'm betting that you know that uh, uh, SodaStream, I think we've had one or two experiences with SodaStream. We had an here. adventure with SodaStream. Yeah. Thanks to Callie. Yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, SodaStream put out a commercial for the Super Bowl, or they submitted a commercial they for the Super Bowl. They were going to put out a commercial. They were going to, but they got banned, unfortunately. Uh, take a look at this commercial. I d are we showing the whole like thing? Like most actors, my real job is saving the world. Start with plain water, add bubbles, mix in the perfect flavor. Look, a soda that's better for you and all of us. Less sugar, less bottles. If only I could make this message go viral. You doing it, Scarlet. Yeah, you doing it. Changing the world, one sip at a time. Sorry, Coke and Pepsi. Oh yeah, she done it. Okay, so it was just that last line. I'm thirsty all of a sudden. <laughs> I bet you are. You want some soda stream, don't you? <laughs> Just that last line, Pepsi and Coke. Sorry, Coke and Pepsi. They said, nope, you can't do it. Coke and Pepsi give us way too much money to let you piss them off with this little few million dollars you'd pay for a Super Bowl ad. You're out of here. Okay, no problem. Guess what? They posted that thing online, shared the story. Millions and millions of views I later. Know. And they didn't even have to pay, what, yeah. two, three million dollars for their the 30 ad. seconds for the ad? That's pretty impressive. Way to go, SodaStream. Don't you love Scarlett Johansson? She's awesome. Mmm, Scarlett. 
Instagram account, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Bruce says you're still much prettier. Oh, you're very sweet. Okay, so science time. Uh, yes. We have a very important I story. I forgot I want, what this story was I about. I want you all to What's listen to me. Story? You should have some more verve, some oh. more caffeine, some oh. more verve bold. Because... It's a, a now is apparent that caffeine makes you sharper and have better memory. So uh, better memory retention, really. And they put on a study at John Hopkins University uh, where they like some some people were given 200 milligrams of caffeine or a placebo, of course. God, you know, I hate those placebo parts of the tests. I, I go through all sorts of people tests call me a placebo all the time. I hate it when like they do it. that anyway. Um, so they, uh, they tested these people against each other and their memory retention. They basically, you know that game They used them as you human play? guinea pigs. You know that game that you play when you're a kid, like Simon? memory? No, memory. Oh. Or Simon's the same like, thing. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, you have to boop, remember boop, boop, boop. where those yeah. cards or that, that light is. Uh, they basically I don't really remember the game, but I think there was one like I that. I think you drink enough caffeine that you okay. would have. I don't think you can play that one off. Okay. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> you drink a lot of caffeine. Uh, they don't say if there's too much, such a thing as too much caffeine. Well, but they said that the effects are only like up to 200 milligrams. It enhances things. Yeah. And after that, it doesn't really do any better. And in fact, at some point, there's diminishing returns. Because you get to shake. <laughs> going to epileptic seizures and stuff like that. Right. But uh, So yeah, up to about 200 milligrams. Uh, you're good. So yeah. what does that tell you? Tank up, people. Drink more caffeine. And by the way, How one... How much is in here? That can is 140 or 120 milligrams. Yeah, 120. This one is 40 milligrams. So, so you could... have a couple of these. You Well, you could... Yeah, you mm. could do two of those or like one of those and one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vervegeek.com, by the way, you can load up on the Verve. All right. So. Go get better in memory. Yep. All right. So... Uh, I bet you like this one, John. Are you going to... Are you going to do this? Uh, I might do this. I might. I was feeling inspired by this house uh, that was listed on the market in the Portland area for three point five million dollars. Chump like change. Portland. Chump change. Yeah. And uh, they have a thirty acre property, so or twenty acre property. They said, you know what? You know, twenty acres is an awful lot to get around on. I think we need to build a train. So, yep, yeah, that's what they did. They just built a little train right on around the entire property. And you can pick it up now for, uh, you know, $3.5 So why are they selling it? You get an included miniature wooden trestle complete with truss bridge over a small creek. And, wait, there's more. You also get your own train tunnel. But does the train, is the tra are the tracks actually Look. secure? Look. Is that, why are they selling, why are they selling this? I know, because you're thinking, I've got to have that. Right. I'm going to buy that. I'm Callie Lewis. 3.5 million is chump change. You guys, go to geeky.tv slash patron and donate <laughs> so I can buy this. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we just need about 3.49 <laughs> million more. Right. And then we can We're get one there. of those. Yeah, should be no problem. <laughs> All right. Well, is it time for a break again? Already, I know. Okay, but, but we do okay. love, we love our advertisers. And I hope you guys too, so do too. So we'll be right back in just a moment after this. these messages. Hey, I like, I like our music. Yeah. It gets me dancing. It's a jingle. And you know what else gets me dancing? What? Robots. Oh, robot time. Okay, <laughs> let's hear about our death and dismemberment. For, for some reason, of the week. we are all about the mines this week on Geek Beat Live. The mimes? Uh, the mines. <laughs> So, uh, actually, there is now a robot that is a minesweeper. So, like the game you play on? No, no, okay. no, no, no. An actual minesweeper. Oh, like, wow. We'll physically go out and find the mines so that you... I don't know why we're so concerned with mines, but it's a problem. It's not a problem for you and I and necessarily in our daily lives, but for military. It's a problem in Europe. For... People in drug cartels, yeah. apparently. We have got to solve this drug cartel mine problem, okay? Those guys need duty. their safety too, okay? So anyway, this... Uh... Plus, I've been planting an awful lot of mines out front. You don't know it, but That's why I don't you're going to find out. Uh, the University of Coimbra in Portugal, uh, they created this little bot, and uh, he 
is built upon the Husky Unmanned Ground Vehicle. I by, like Huskies. Yes, by Clearpath uh, Robotics in Canada. Hmm. Basically, he has this little uh, metal detector out in front of him, and uh, he has a penetrating radar and an arm and sensors for navigation. He'll go out, he'll do the work, he'll find all the mines for you, and then he'll alert you so that you don't have to waste manpower and literally kill men in order to find the mines. And, but the uh, mines are still there, right? Well, yeah, but then once they're detected, once they're found, you can deploy men to take them out safely. Well, see, the finding the mines is not the, it's not the part I worry about. It's the taking them out part that I worry about. <laughs> but there are safer ways to do that. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure there, there are. There are actually bots that will, I think, do that as well. They I think. Big tanks with the spinning chains. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my philosophy is drop a bomb on the minefield. <laughs> Problem solved. Problem solved. That's right. Um, and how about this? I think this one came from Janny. Actually, Guest two five five zero. Yay, Canada. Yay, Canada. <laughs> Go and fixing those mines. Uh -huh. um, this one actually freaks me out, so I okay. know it'll freak you out. Oh God. <laughs> what is it? This is. Um, so you know how cats. They navigate and they can feel distances, you know, and not with their stick whiskers. their head with their whiskers. Uh -huh. Well, now we're looking into building whiskers into robots to in, in increase their navigation systems. These uh, are from UC Berkeley and Berkeley Labs. They've created e-whiskers, they're calling them. Uh -huh. And uh, they're made of elastic fibers with a new nanotube slash nanoparticle film that's 10 times more pressure sensitive than current sensors out there for robotics. So you can imagine how much more sensitive and uh, able they are to move around and navigate themselves. So fuzzy, hairy robots. Sensitive robots. Well, they're not fuzzy yet. I mean, fuzzy, they're still like hairy. hard. But they actually look like whiskers. And that freaks me out for some they, reason. They if, you take, if you take one of these robots and cut half those whiskers off and then put it on the counter, will it fall? Dave, <laughs> they still have a crispy outer shell, okay? <laughs> yeah, they that's do. the important thing to know about these robots. Right, right, exactly. Anyway, that's it for robotics time. Yay! Planes, trains, and automobiles time. Okay, this is going to be so much better than the robot time. Brilliant. Whiskers on robots. Well, what whiskers. we're not going to do is put whiskers on <laughs> jumbo jets. But uh, Seattle, over in Seattle, Boeing is going to put the Seahawks logo. And actually, not only they're going to, they did it. They put the Seahawks logo all over a big old 747-8F freighter. That's because the Seahawks won the uh, Super Bowl, right? That happened last week? Oh, here. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that that happened. And so, <laughs> team. Well, by the time they re joke. by the Come time on. they watch this, she has a 50-50 chance that's of being true. right. That is 50 true. 50-50 chance of being right. So, um, oh wait a sec, real quick, just say, too bad the Seahawks didn't win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, too bad they didn't win. Anywho, uh, what's happening is, you know, the, the Seahawks, they're they're. They have the 12th man. They're famous for having the loudest friggin' fans. I mean, they're really loud. So this is kind of their homage to the 12th man. Okay. And they put all these little statistics, like showing things like how many of the seats from the Boeing one of the guys could lift if he had to pick them up. And what I'm curious about cool. is, I think under in the carriage, the underbelly, uh -huh. it says something about jelly beans. How many jelly beans? Oh yeah, beans they I can put. Hold? They put uh, is this the Seahawks thing? three hundred thousand pounds worth of Skittles in, or how many it would hold? Three hundred thousand bags of Skittles or some pounds. Why Skittles? <sighs> Taste the rainbow. Can you imagine that thing flying over the stadium, dropping Skittles? That would be awesome. That would be amazing. The mortality rate at the stadium would be huge. <laughs> yeah, but they would. That, that what a way to go. I mean, if you're gonna um, die, you want to I mean, die from Skittles. Seriously. Trust me. I did it once. It was great. Okay, moving on to the next story and the last story of the day okay. before unboxing time. Unboxing! This, my friends, is the world's first quadcopter that is set up to launch its own rockets. What? Yes. No. Yes. No. So what happened was this guy, I don't know his name, he built his own little custom quad and as you can see, it's hovering there. Oh, bang! Oh. Look at that. Launched a rocket. He triggered it. Hang on. What? Wait. Wait for it because 
He also mounted, look at this. He mounted GoPros on here so you can see it like, okay. <laughs> nice. Hang on. Yeah, that's it. You see the rotors are spinning. Yeah. It's up in the air. Here it is. Now this is from the rocket itself. Nice. Is that not sweet? That is very, very cool. But poor guy, you don't even know his name? I don't know his name. Oh. His name is Bob. I'm I'm almost entirely 100% not certain about it. John, so, this is like that scene from Austin Powers. What is it, John? What It looks like it's a giant... It's the Alan Parsons project. <laughs> I like to like call it... Giant... Johnson, get over here and yeah, watch this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is actually, I have to give it up to you. That is probably the coolest story of the entire week. Good, there you go. All right, thank you, Ben, because I didn't even do it. <laughs> okay, we're going to be right back after this. We're going to take a quick commercial break, come back, open all kinds of boxes. All right, that we'll be I right did back. Do. Oh, be sure to leave us a fame spot. Go oh, yeah. Go to tv slash fame spot and let us know. What would you use from Facebook? Would you new, use the new paper app? We want to know. Hey guys, we're dancing to the music. As Hubert says in the chat room, it is jealous time. Jealous time, nice. <laughs> Unboxing time, okay. We have way too many boxes. We'll never get them all open, so no. we're gonna have to move fast. Okay, let's do it. Small, medium, or large? Small. Small it is. Here we go, here's a small one. Small it is. Ooh, show us, ooh, show us what road. it is. It's, oh, nice. yeah. Nice. Oh. Anything coming from Rode is good. This is the Video Mic Go. Let's just ah. dig into it here. Now we have reviewed Rode mics in the past. Yes. We love them, and they have uh, the Video Mic Pro, which I believe, if I remember correctly, Ken gave an Editor's Choice Award yep. to last year. Uh, look at this. What is this? So this is the video mic. What did I say? Go? Go. It says compact and lightweight by design. The video mic Go delivers clear, clear crisp directional audio, etc. Nice. So, no battery required. No battery. Lightweight. Yeah, just plug it in. Two year warranty. There we and go. And here's how it's meant to be deployed right here. You mount it right on top of a DSLR. Okay. Yeah. You've got a couple of K or one cable here. Yeah. It's connecting just into the back. Nice. And then into your DSLR Plug it into on there. the other side. Plug in the DSLR, and it's got its Damn, own little suspension go. kind of. Yeah, I like that. It's suspended. Look, see that? Ooh, Ooh. ah, wiggly, wiggly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know Ken is like dying to get his hands on this. He is an audio <laughs> He's like, Take your hands monster. Off that. That's he loves. Mine. He loves him some audio. Okay. Yes. Small, medium, or large? Medium. Uh, okay, this looks like medium to me. What, what do we, we got have here? The ah. Boss Cam HD Wireless IP camera. That is correct. We actually have a few of these coming in. We are um, going to be doing a bunch of coverage on these uh, little. We've, we've had several requests from yes. you guys about these little types of IP cameras. So yes. We're going to be doing a little roundup. This that is we the are. Boss Cam. I, nice. This, it looks cool. Nice. It comes with it's rubberized. It feels good. Goodies, goodies galore. Oh look, this is its little Ethernet cable. It's one of these. Oh, that's cute. Retractable Ethernet cables. So you've got the Ethernet on the back. But it also has Wi-Fi, so yep. it's got a little antenna here. We'll screw it right in place. Bingo, bango. Yeah. And notice this little thing. You know what I think this is? A little mount. I believe this is for wall mounting. You could screw this to the wall, and then this would get mounted on here. And I imagine you could probably even ceiling mount it upside down yeah. and hang it like that. Looks like it. So that's pretty cool. What's the model number? How much is this, guys? Um, Let's this is see. The, the model, model F19821P. Yeah, or that might be FI. FI. Um, it's the 9821P. Oh yeah, 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 How it's much FI. is that? Let us know, yep. you guys in the chat room. Look it up for us, and we got to keep going. All right. Here's another one. I'm not even gonna ask. This one is medium size. Oh, oh I'm opening this one. Okay, go for I, it. You know what? This, this is mine, though. Oh god. <laughs> this we love these guys. Canex. Canex no, really? It's. Oh, sorry. It's is Kinex. it Canex? Did they? Yes. Wow, yes. I've been yes. calling Canex for they so long. Wow. Canex. Wow. Canex. They actually, we've been talking about their products for a while now. They have really good stuff. Really, they do. This and is now, this is a gigabit Ethernet Thunderbolt enabled hub device. Okay, see what else is in there. So what what this is designed for, especially for folks who who use Macs, 
Um, you, the problem with Macs is you can't get docking stations. Apple just doesn't build them. I don't know why for your laptops. So other people build solutions for that. This is actually a little docking unit. It's good looking. It's yeah. aluminum. It's got a soft touch. Uh, kind of rubberized finish here. I guess you could lay your 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 phone right here, yep. and there's a little routing port like here, so a cable port. comes up through there. Lay your phone here. Then I'll on the back, look at all these goodies: gigabit Ethernet, uh, micro SS. That's a USB three micro kind of thing, I think. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, you've got a uh, USB, USB cable in here. Three. USB three to connect to the Mac. Yeah, oh, that's to connect to the Mac. That makes sense, right. And then you've got three USB 3 ports, and you've got a 10-watt port so you could plug in a tablet and get full power there. Okay, so this is not a Thunderbolt one. This is a USB 3 port. Right. Well, that also means it's appropriate for a lot more than just a Mac then. Correct. Because even if you just have a PC laptop. Yeah, you could use this on anything. USB 3 to this thing, and then what you can do, folks, don't, for, don't, don't forget. You could plug a keyboard, a mouse. You could also plug a USB to HDMI adapter into this, have an external monitor, so, and then your ethernet goes into this. Mm -hmm. So when you like get into work or home or whatever, you put your laptop down, you plug this into it and bang, keyboard, monitor, mouse, ethernet, all connected with one cable. Yep. How awesome is that? And also, they uh, they have a keyboard that I was hoping to get in. I think we are still I think it's waiting coming. on that. Yeah. Uh, the... You're going to have to put that stuff on the floor. Yeah, I know. It's getting a, a little bit. Okay, heavy. we've got... Opa! It holds up well. Okay, now these, as I understand, are all kind of related. So we'll, yes, they we'll are. start over here and we'll move that way. Okay. This. Ooh, Ooh uh, life and smart home automation. Nice. Is that what that says? The Revolve. <laughs> nice. Home automation. So this home is automation. home automation products. Yes. Um, and they have several different types, right? So what it is, look at that. Package. Look at that. Oh, oh, I guess we ripped okay. it. Somebody <laughs> must have played with it. Um, so what it is, is a little hub. It's look at this 60 second setup. Just download and install the smartphone app. You scan the QR code, bingo, bango, I guess. So this hub is designed to be the one central location for controlling a large number mm -hmm. of different products. So that we're going to give a test and we're going to tell you all about how to use it for home automation. But this, these others, I believe, go with this. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we got. This is a this is just a little box here. Uh, I think that's just uh, power cables. I'm or not something. sure. I'm just not sure what it is. Let's see. This is oh, actually. It's an LED bulb. This is from Insteon LED 8 watt LED bulb. Okay. So these, all of these little devices that we got to go with it are controllable through the app. Yes. So. So could, a lot of the problem with home automation is when there's a single device that only does one thing, you know, and so one app controls one thing, then you have another, another app, app to control, control another, another thing. thing. So hopefully this is kind of more of a, a complete An, system. Yeah, integrated system. Okay, and then this says remote link to keypad for scene. I don't know keypad. what that. I, I don't know, like a little keypad that you can. You can, oh, look yeah, at look yeah. at that, a little mini keypad. And I suppose uh, it could do light controls and stuff like that. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. um, so you could program in different scenes, like nice. one for your date night. Right. And one for the opposite of whatever that is. Okay, let's <laughs> your see. Your party nights. Yeah, party nights. Yeah. Now, over in this box, we've got, oh boy. Guess what? This is Hue. Ah, the light bulb. Personal right? lighting from Philips. Yes. This box apparently has three light bulbs. Let's see what all. This so is. Hue actually is a light bulb um, system that allows you to control the uh, the colors, colors right? of the light itself. So oh, nice. with an app, you can just change it at will. Nice. Look at this little. This thing like stands up. It looks what like. What is that? Is I don't that? know. It's got like. How cool is that? 
Look like a this. slide out. I don't know what the deal is okay, with this. This looks like a little controller. Yeah, that must be a little controller. And then these are the hue bulbs. I'm not going to take them all out right now, but they're they're little light bulbs and well, I can't get that 600 out lumens. So let's see what else we've got. 600 lumens? Okay. 600 lumens each. So what else do we have in the box? Okay, I'm going to set this one down. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh, uh -oh, what? This, my oh. friends, set that over there, is the Sonos Play 3. Aha! Uh -huh. So what are they telling us? Unlike other home automation systems, this that is one, really cool. This one is designed to integrate in with your whole Sonos audio system. So a lot of you have Sonos, um, and from what I—that's a good question, Dave. Yeah. What standard is the what standard does the Revolve controller work with? Because there are different standards. There's Zigbee, there's Z-Wave, mm -hmm. there's Wi-Fi, there's proprietary stuff. And I believe I can't remember. I'm not an expert on this particular unit. They get mixed up because I haven't tried it yet. But I believe the thing about this one is it works with multiple different systems. Yeah, I think it so, kind of ties it all together. Yeah, you just want to have one to interface with everything, and it will translate them all back and forth. And that's why the big range of products to go with it, yeah. to plug them all in and see how the one thing works all these different systems. That is awesome. Okay, now we've got to put all this stuff on the floor. Okay, yes. Because we have our last, our last box of the day. It's a doozy, people. It is a doozy. Oh, oh, oh. oh you need help, Rachel? <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. That's it. <laughs> okay, bye. So, this is a, a Vera desk. It weighs 38 kilograms. So, you guys um, know that I love my, uh, you know, world of stand-up desks, and we've done some product reviews of those. Um, but a lot of you, actually, we just got a question today on it. What are some less expensive options? What are some, you know, more versatile options out there where you don't have to necessarily replace your entire desk so this because most of those others they cost probably in the seven to six, thou, seven hundred to a thousand, thousand yeah dollars so this thing and and uh you ready um you ready sorry, here. you got it <laughs> Yeehaw. Uh, this is designed to uh go with any existing desk. desk, so you don't have to change anything else. And this literally just sits on your desk, and there's no. I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. There is. There, these are the instructions. You get frustrated if <laughs> you put this on your desk and you stand it up and you're done. Here That's we go. You ready? There are two hand, it came out of the box like this. We, yeah. Notice, we didn't have to assemble anything, okay? It came out of the box just like this. Two handles right here and here. You would be standing over here, squeeze the handles, and bam. Nice. Stand up desk. <laughs> and it's actually quite stable because yeah, you can you see, can... I, I can pull on this and it's not like really falling forward or anything, okay? So you can, uh, obviously our, our table is already standing height, but um, you can adjust this so that it comes up and down any, to any different height. heights. And it's got a nice little slide out keyboard drawer right yeah, here. Oh, it's locked in. You unscrew, unscrew these little here. locks here on the side. And bang, this, this slides down so you can have this on your desk all the way down. Type with your keyboard. But this allows slide this you... in, stand up. Yeah. This allows you to get up, be moving, um, you know, not necessarily have to uh, sit down all day. So if you're if you're interested in trying out this new method of of working and being a little healthier while while doing it, then uh, this is a great way to try that. Veradesk.com, three hundred yeah. bucks for this size. They also make two smaller sizes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Get so, you one if you if you if you've been thinking about stand up desks. Yeah, you won't go, can't go wrong. We're gonna be uh, trying that out over the next. Actually, John, it's on. It's going on John's desk. That's right. So he's I'll let you know how it, it works. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us each and every week. We appreciate you joining us from we all over you. the world. 
Go follow him on uh, google.com slash plus John P. See all his cool posts. And at twitter.com slash John Pose. And she is, of course, twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis and google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis. And we, <laughs> together, are out of here. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>